I have been every voice. You are the chosen one! Anakin! Anakin! This is where the fun begins. Inside your head. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi, a controversy surrounding Disney and Star Wars authors and more. As always my dear Megalorians, before we dive into the news please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new videos. So as we say here on my channel without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. We're going to start with Obi-Wan Kenobi. I just want to clear the air a little bit surrounding a video that I made the other day where I expressed why I'm a bit worried about Lucasfilm getting the Kenobi series done right. Looking back I do admit that I did not express my views correctly and in many ways I came across very negatively which was certainly not my intention and if you're familiar with my content you know that I post videos all the time expressing how excited I am for Kenobi and how much the show means to me as a prequels fan. While I will admit that I did not word everything the right way I still am apprehensive about a lot of the decisions that Lucasfilm make but when it comes to the Kenobi series a lot of my concerns were completely swept away when Ewan McGregor went on Jimmy Kimmel the other night. He talked about how great the show is and even stated that the script itself is fantastic and he is indeed a producer on the show so it made me happy to know that Ewan McGregor is going to have a big say on the series. So with that out of the way let's get to the main bulk of the Kenobi news. During the interview he stated that there's going to be a special scene with someone very special to him but someone we've not seen him on screen with before. Now a lot of Star Wars fans gathered together to give their opinions on who they think this is and while most people stated it's probably a Jedi we haven't seen before, many were quick to point out it could be Ahsoka or even Bo-Katan Kreese. While Obi-Wan shared a lot of screen time with them in the Clone Wars, we haven't seen it in live action, so that's what Ewan McGregor may have been talking about. Alternatively, it could even be Chewbacca. In the interview, Ewan McGregor stated that this scene was done on May the 4th and it was a very special one. Also bear in mind guys, it's been confirmed that Hayden Christensen has now been on set as Darth Vader. So exciting and I can't wait. Now this isn't the only tease we have for the Kenobi series because Joel Edgerton, who played Owen Lars in the prequels, has addressed his return in Obi-Wan Kenobi. So let's take a look at it. Joel Edgerton is one of a number of big names coming back to Tatooine for Disney Plus's upcoming series, which will tell the story of the legendary Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi in the years between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Joel Edgerton, who played a younger version of Luke's uncle Owen, unsurprisingly faced some Star Wars questions while out in support of the new Barry Jenkins limited series, The Underground Railroad. He even teased just a little bit about what it's like getting back into character for Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is what he says, well if they give me two seconds I'm going to turn it into four. The actor has said for years that he would happily return to the role if the studio wanted him to and the script was so good and that's exactly what ended up happening. After years of waiting to return to Star Wars, he is back for the series. After joking a little bit about having manifested it through sheer force of will, the actor shared a story about Phil Brown, the actor who first played the role in the original trilogy. This is what Edgerton said. Soon after that, he passed away and his wife told me a funny story. In 2002, we were at one of those Star Wars conventions and Phil had a little nap behind his table where he'd been signing autographs. He had a nap and he woke up to two ambulance guys thinking that there was something wrong with him and they tried to revive him. It's funny because he was just taking a nap and we just needed to wake him up. So there you go guys, the script seems to be very good according to Ewan McGregor and Joel Edgerton and while I'm sure you guys can understand why I had concerns about the series, I should have just gone with my gut instinct that it's going to be an amazing show. So it's all positivity for me here on out. So now my dear Meglorians, we're going to be talking about a Disney controversy which has finally been settled. To put it very simply, Disney refused to pay the right amount of royalties to novelists Alan D. Foster, James Kahn and Donald F. Glutt. In some of these cases they didn't pay them whatsoever but that's finally been settled. So let's Let's take a look at it. According to this article, there are two kinds of Star Wars fans, those who've seen the Skywalker saga and those who watch every movie, every series and every scrap of Star Wars novelization. I'm definitely in the latter category. If you fall into this category, of course, there's little doubt you're familiar with Star Wars writer Alan D. Foster. He wrote some classic novels like Splinter of the Mind's Eye, the Star Wars Legends book, The Approaching Storm, which is one of my favourite Legends prequels books. And in recent times, he wrote the novelization for The Force Awakens and he's written so many iconic sci-fi books outside of Star Wars as well. So the news first came out last November when Foster published a letter via the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America Guild and in part it read the following, when you Disney purchased Lucasfilm you acquired the rights to some books I wrote, Star Wars the novelization of the very first film, Splinter of the Mind's Eye the first sequel novel and you owe me royalties on these books, you stopped paying them. When you purchased 20th Century Fox you eventually acquired the rights to other books I'd written, the novelization of Alien, Aliens and Alien 3, you've never 
never paid royalties on any of these or even issued royalty statements for them. Now guys, I have major, major respect for not only Star Wars authors, but authors in general, because in a digital age, published and self-published authors have a much more difficult time making money than they used to. And yet the art they produce is phenomenal, especially in the case of this guy. In the letter, he went on to say, you continue to ignore requests from my agents, you continue to ignore queries from the SFWA, the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, and you continue to ignore my legal representatives. I know this is what gargantuan corporations often do, ignore requests and inquiries hoping the petitioner will simply go away or possibly die, but I'm still here and I'm still entitled to what you owe me, including not to be ignored just because I'm only one lone writer. How many other writers and artists out there are you similarly ignoring? Thankfully though, it seems like the situation may be coming to an end. The science fiction and fantasy writers of America, along with Foster's own legal team, have seemingly come close to reaching a settlement that will end this Star Wars royalty controversy once and for all. It's so disgusting that one of the most prolific and important writers in this franchise is being treated like absolute garbage by Disney. The simple act of paying him his royalties that he's earned for the phenomenal work that he's produced is ridiculous. The article concludes by saying at this time Foster is not writing for Disney or Lucasfilm in any capacity. On April the 1st, Foster actually shared on his personal blog, the irritating imbroglio with Disney, which you may have read about, is moving rapidly towards a mutual agreeable conclusion. A formal statement will be forthcoming. And then Wikipedia posted the following details about Foster's career as a Star Wars author. He wrote the novelization of Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope as George Lucas's ghostwriter and the very first expanded universe novel, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. You guys really need to read it if you haven't, it's amazing. He later returned to Star Wars first writing the Republic era novel The Approaching Storm and later the novelization of Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens and of course the short story Bait published in Star Wars Insider 162. So I guess we can finish on some good news today because that's finally being resolved and they are coming to a mutual agreement but it's ridiculous this had to be a thing in the first place but what do you guys think and what did you make of today's news update in general? If you enjoyed it please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, do all of that good stuff down below and also go Guys, if you're feeling generous, please consider becoming a patron, where for just two, ten, or even fifty dollars a month, you get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube. And if you join the latter tier, you get to speak to me one on one for 60 minutes every month. And just quickly, guys, I want to point out that I do now have playlists where I group my videos by category so you can binge watch videos by topic. For example, all of the Mandalorian breakdowns are categorized, the Book of Boba Fett news updates, Bad Batch videos, and so on. I'm Star Wars Meg, wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.